Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. It is 427 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Praise God. Praise God. Praise him again. And repeat. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to stop saying that, folks, and I'm praying that we just continue to praise him more and more every day. Guys, I'm telling you. The more we praise him, I believe the more we'll feel his presence and the more we will see his presence, the more we'll see things in this surrounding world that's ruled by Satan change before our eyes because that's how awesome our daddy is. We got to believe it. We got to start spending more time with him. We got to quit worrying about what everybody else is doing. Worry about our own relationship with Christ. Again, this is going to be, a, this might be a brutal one. This may hurt feelings, guys. I can't worry about feelings anymore. We have got to deliver the word of God, stick to the word of God, quit dissecting it and adding and taking away from it. Just leave the word of God alone and let the Holy Spirit speak to us, folks. And I'm telling you, we can see amazing things happen. But because of our our flesh and our souls, our feelings, is, is man, things are just a mess. But praise God. I praise him no matter what. I praise him for you guys. I thank you guys for joining, whether you agree or disagree. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I love each and every one of you, and I praise God for you. This is how we all grow together. Amen. But thank you for joining me for uh, part two of Peace Work. And, folks, I was going to leave that background that was on there yesterday for these next four days. But after skimming across today's scriptures and today's devotional, I got to do this. Jehovah Jireh, God is my provider. In the background there, there's a... Abraham on top of the mountain, get ready to sacrifice, sacrifice Isaac. That's how much he trusted God because he knew God was going to provide. And he knew, if, guys, this is why the word is so important getting in there. This is all the way back in uh, Genesis. And I had to look it up, folks. I was curious how many times in the Bible it mentions Jireh. I'm sure it's in there more times in the actual Hebrew and Greek than what we're reading in the English translation. But Genesis chapter 22, verse 14 I found it in the King James and a couple other translations is where it says his name is Jehovah Jireh, God, my provider. The Lord will provide. He will. If. If. Guys, a lot of people just think God is so awesome, amazing. He's going to provide for me. We, there's a lot more in the Bible than just God being awesome. A lot more. We got our share to do. We got our part to do. And this is good, guys. Let's just get in with this. Um, our scriptures today that's highlighted, other than what I just spoke about in Genesis 22, 14. If you want to jot that down and look it up, praise God. I've got highlighted Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Our lead all verse is Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. And the word of God says this. Guys, we let this speak. This scripture is so important, especially in today's world. We have got to stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. What are you doing? What am I doing? How am I responding to God's call? How am I showing God that I love him? How am I showing God that I love my neighbor as myself? How am I showing God that I'm sticking to the two greatest commands? Guys, we, whoo, come on. Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter six, verse four. Let me see. This is the new living. That's what's written down. Let me, uh, I got the NIV highlighted, folks. It, it reads the same. Let me just read this one. This is the NLV. Word of God says, everyone should look at themselves and see how they do their own work. Whew. Then they can be happy in what they have done. They should not compare themselves with their neighbor. Folks, I know I need work on that, and God's working on me in that. I go to work and meet my brother. We, we, we look at what the people around us at work are getting away with and getting paid more money. Who cares? Am I doing what God is calling me to do? I like to say, am I earning that paycheck? Not only from the, the place I work, can I sleep good at night knowing I did, I did what I could. I did what I could today, Lord. And whatever I do, I do it all for your glory. And your word says, whatever I do, work at it wholeheartedly as it's serving the Lord as a servant of the Lord, not the company I work for. And that's what we got to, again, transform these minds, knowing that we are serving the Lord. Are we giving him our all? And we talked the other day about that, that, that job interview. We got to know our employer is constantly watching us. Are we giving our best? Are we focused on what we're doing or what everybody around us is doing? 
Cool. All right. We're still in power prayers to start your day. So part two reads like this. Once you have prayed and then heard God's direction, have the courage to walk where he leads, remembering that he will always go before you. And that's Isaiah 52, 12. All right. Let me do this right here. Right over here, Abraham. No matter what God calls you to go somewhere, go. Don't hesitate. Don't put your hand to the plow and look back. We just read that. Uh, don't let fear give you lead feet. Instead, rest in the assurance that God will give you every good thing you need so you can do what he wants. God's not going to call you into action. He's not going to put you out in the game without giving you the right equipment. I don't know if you guys have heard the, the, the phrase before that God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. God is not going to put you in a situation and leave you, let's just say, naked. God's not going to, for my, I can only compare my own personal relationship, my own walk, God. God is not going to put me with a bunch of youth in this town, with a bunch of teenagers and leave me speechless and dumbfounded with not knowing how to talk to them, not knowing what to feed them, not knowing. Guys, God's not going to do that. If that's what he's calling you to do, he will provide. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Um, that's Hebrews 13, 21. God will give you courage, gifts, and opportunities, as well as combine your experience, talents, and knowledge to place you where he needs you. Whew. Come on. Come on, folks. Each day, tap into the power of commitment. Keeping your course steady, I like to call that perseverance, so that you will be amply rewarded now and at the end of your journey as a good and faithful servant. Folks, man, and that's Matthew 25, 23. I cannot wait for that day when Jesus puts his arm around me and just embraces me and pats me on the back and says, well, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I do not want Jesus to look at me and say, part from me. I never knew you. Because you continue to practice witnesses, and I'm going to wickedness, and I'm going to translate my interpretation. I don't want him to look at me and say, "You you focus more on this world than you did me." Apart from me, I never knew you, guys. We mm -mm -mm. come on. As you perform your work, you need to remember that you are an ambassador of Christ. Oh, that's part of my morning prayers, folks. To help you interact with coworkers in a Christ-like way, and folks, I glanced at this. If you do not have a secular job, replace this word co-workers and workplace and all that with your neighborhood, with your family, with with whatever. Re just what, fill in the blank. You don't have to have a secular job to have these attributes to be an ambassador of Christ. Um, you, to interact with your co-workers in a Christ-like way, pray for the power to live not by worldly standards, but by God's word. Sound familiar? This exercise will enable you to avoid four worldly traps. The first one being the tendency to compare your job, pay, or your duties with those of others. Folks, and I've been there. I've been there. There's a, the other electrician where I work making way more money than me doing nothing. Doing nothing. I don't care. I don't have to answer to that. Am I, am I doing what I'm called to do? Am I earning my paycheck again? Yes. Praise God for that. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Um, if you are living in the power of commitment to God's plan for your life, he will enable you to be content in your current work, situation, home, family, neighborhood, whatever, guys, He'll, to be content no matter what it is. Praise God. Man, praise God that he is Jehovah Jireh, that he provides everything we need every single day to get through every 24-hour arrangement, all for his plan, his will, his purpose. He's not going to leave us high and dry. He's not going to leave us hanging, folks. Guys, I'm just going to leave this one alone. I praise God for every one of you. I'm praying that speaks. I'm praying you get that scripture in you. And I'm just praying that you get alone with God and do whatever he's calling you to do, God. I do not know. I don't know what God is calling you to do. No human being on this earth can tell you what God is calling you to do. Um, guys, we're just going to leave that alone. All right. So, guys, until tomorrow on Thursday the 24th, Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord says in. I love you guys.